Hi guys, so I occasionally get invited on quite a number of different kind of farming platforms on the internet, physically, in different areas. And I'm asked a question which is actually quite common. If you had to give one person just one kind of advice, a farmer, uh, that you think would change their lives forever, what exactly would that advice be? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing that with you guys, so stick around right through the end. So, you're probably thinking to yourself, what does it mean to be a better farmer? If you're advising me to become a better farmer, how do I even rate? How do I tell myself that I'm actually a better farmer? How do I know? that I'm actually performing better. Well, when it comes to farming, there are different ways of farming. There are mainly actually two ways of farming. One of them is crop farming, you understand? So, as you can see me right now, right here, I'm inside a banana plantation. This is one of the banana plantations that I actually do own. Well, the only banana plantation I do own on this actual farm. You can see that I have some bananas right here, yeah? So, I'm enjoying it. Just recently, we had been, you know, pruning and making the plantation look nice, as you can see. We've started getting some, some good bunches yeah um, you know a bit sizable earlier on the bunches on the trees inside here were quite small but now they are starting to get bigger but in addition to that you can also farm animals so as you can see behind that's a chicken house you know in the background of the plantation I have a chicken house and then I have another one on the lower side yeah and these are chickens that I actually do farm in this area so different farmers will do different things some of them will do crops others will do animals you know people will do even insects I've seen people doing black soldier flies I've personally done black soldier flies before people will be doing bees for honey and so how do you rate your performance how do you call yourself a better farmer it's usually one of two either increase production or two more money, it will depend. Uh, usually, most farmers, it will be more money. The more money I make this year, it doesn't matter whether I've increased the production or not, I've actually become a better farmer. And of course, it does make sense. But of course, sometimes it's simply because of market trends. Maybe the prices of your product have gone higher. Uh, for example, if you are selling milk and a liter of milk, maybe it was 20 cents. If the price of milk doubles to 40 cents, well, you're going to sell more product, but does that mean you've become a better farmer? Not really, certainly. You understand? Because if the price drops back down again and it's now 10 cents, then you're in trouble. You haven't really become a better farmer. But it makes sense for you to actually rate yourself according to more money. The other thing is to rate yourself according to production. Maybe you're telling yourself, I produced, let me say, 20 million eggs last year. If this year I can make 25 million eggs, I'll consider myself a better farmer. But also, it's not the perfect rating because it could simply mean that you've just gotten in more money into the business or into the farm and now you've expanded and you're able to produce more. But does that certainly make you a better farmer? Becoming a better farmer is being efficient you know for whatever you have if on let's say if with a thousand chickens I'm able to produce at 95% am I actually producing at 95% you understand if I'm producing at 80% for me to actually become a better farmer it means with a thousand chickens I will go to 85 90 and 95 percent that's ideally the goal for you to actually be efficient with the resources you have and get the best result out of it so the one thing that's certainly going to change your farming life forever if you implement it diligently is learning from your mistakes i know i know now that sounds crazy it's probably not what you expected you expected something very magical something out of the books and this really basic thing sounds quite strange but give me an opportunity let me explain this to you now i'll use an analogy of something that i actually learned from medical school from one of my professors on the ward you know in my fourth year at the medical school we actually go and start studying from the wards you know you're working on patients you're not only learning from classrooms and from you know cadavers and things like that but actually working from live patients. And so when you would be in the hospital, you would consistently be asked particular questions, you know. Uh, let's say you're in the cardiology unit, you know, they'll ask you a question here, a question here, a question here. Random questions. And then, of course, exams would come at the end of the semester, and then you have to do exams. Now, the one thing that was actually told to me by one of my professors was that you don't need to read too much. You know, what we would plan is at the end of the day, when you're done with all this word work, you go back and open a very big book, you know, let's say a cardiology book, and read as much as you can. And then hope that by the time you go back to the ward or when you go to the ward when you're asked some things you will remember them from what you studied and then answer them and then when exam time comes you'll do the same exact thing the one thing that he actually told us was that the things that are asked on the ward 
are actually the only things you ever need to do because those are the most likely things they're going to ask you in the exams. Around 85% of the things that are going to be asked to you on the ward, the things he will ask you, you know, you're working on a patient and then he'll tell you, you know, what nerve is right here? Or give me one sign to show this, whatever it is. Those are the things that are going to be asked to you in the examination. So his advice was this, at the end of every day or every time you're on the ward, when someone asks something, it doesn't need to be asked to you. When they ask it to one of your colleagues or anyone around and you don't know it, note it down. Note it down. At the end of the day, you'll probably have noted down 15 points. Go at the end of that day and read those 15 points. Understand them properly. If they have asked about a particular drug, how it works, go back and read. Understand how that drug works. And at the end of the semester or at the end of the course unit, you'll probably have written down maybe 150 questions and you'll have read at your own pace 150 different things. And those 150 things are the things that are going to matter at the end. And so this helps your recall because number one, it was practical um there was context into it when they were asking you you understand so it becomes easier for you to remember unlike reading from a textbook without any purpose number two since it was asked to you physically right there you felt like there was a need to actually understand it so it makes it very easy and you don't have too much to read honestly at the end so something when it comes to farming you know it's about learning from your mistakes. When you learn from your mistakes, there's not too many mistakes you can make. There's probably, let's say, 80 mistakes that you'll make while farming, yeah? Most of the things you learn from basics, you understand? But there's not too much that you can learn. Now, what happens is that occasionally, you'll meet mistakes. You know, they'll, you'll find some hard things that you didn't know, some complicated things that you didn't know. You'll make a mistake, your animals will die. You'll make a mistake and maybe your banana plantation like this one will get infected by a banana wilt or something like that and you have to cut down a few or all of the entire plantation, things like that. But the most important thing is learning from them because farming is a game of patience. Guys, farming is a game of patience. There's nothing so complicated about it. It's about giving it time learning from what you've learned and becoming better every year. You see, the thing with farming is that there's too many variables. You can't tell yourself that you're going to master it so quickly. There's too many variables. The most common one is the weather, you understand? So for us here, for example, if the sun decides to come and shine for a very long time, this plantation is certainly going to be affected. You understand? My chickens over there in the background are going to be affected because the cost of feeding them is going to go very high because there'll be no maize because some farmers of maize who are maybe 200 kilometers away from me who are also not receiving maize uh, are not going to get a good harvest so the price raises. There's a lot of complicated things. Yeah, You physically can't run a farm alone so you need a lot of people from the outside. Those people also play a role in whether your farm becomes successful or not. Then you're going to have to deal with market prices which fluctuate a lot. Ideally they is too much to play around with. So it's about trying to make it as stable as possible. And how do you make it as stable as possible? By making sure that you learn from your mistakes, yeah? For me personally, on the farm, I've learned from a lot of my mistakes. I've had terrible mistakes. I've made mistakes where, for example, one time I was sharing a chicken house with my dad, yeah? Now, it's not like the problem was with my dad, but just the fact of sharing the chicken house with someone else meant that I couldn't 100% regulate. Because at the top floor, I had my own chickens and I was dealing with that and at the bottom floor my dad's chickens were there and I can't control how he looks after his chickens or how guys come into his unit and then my guy is also working up then occasionally you know they'll tell one guy to move from down to the top before I knew it my birds had full typhoid and they all had to be wiped away they all had to you know go away and I just made a loss like that you understand so that's something I learned and I implemented it I made sure that number one the chicken house is always one flock completely one flock there's nothing like down up number two uh, the place is restricted there is restricted access to the chickens so you make sure you learn from your mistakes yeah i'll tell you something else that i learned from my mistake a while back when i just started farming i decided to grow maize i went and rented land somewhere i didn't know the history of the land i just rented a guy's land which is actually a very common act here in uganda uh, and I know in many parts of the world, you rent land maybe for one or two years and you plant there your crops and it's quite cheap, honestly. So that's what I did. And guys, I planted and I got nothing. The maize that I harvested at the end of the season, when I evaluated it, it was like less than a half of what I had put in to plant that maize and, you know, get it to that point. Now, that's something else I learned. I told myself there's no way I'm going to be growing maize commercially around this area. I'll just focus my attention on making sure that I have enough 
enough money saved to buy and store maize when the prices are low. Because it's so unpredictable. You never know what you're going to get at what point. Yeah, very, very unpredictable. For me, it was just a no-brainer. There's no way I was going to do that. Yeah, so you need to make sure that you learn from your mistakes. Learn from your mistakes. Implement what you've learned. Remember, farming is a game for a long time. It's about a long time. So if over the first year you, you make these mistakes, learn from them. Next time you use them as a stepping stone. You make sure that you don't ever make that mistake again. By the time three, four years get done, there's not too many more mistakes you can make, honestly. And if you're not going to make any mistakes, that means you've mastered the art of farming, and that means you can maximize efficiency. Make sure that you get the best results for what you're actually putting in, yeah? If you have a banana plantation like this, then you're getting the very best, you know, the biggest bunches from your plantation. If you have a dairy farm, then you're getting the most amount of milk that you can actually get from that farm. You understand? That's it, guys. Yeah, there's nothing so complicated about it. If I had to give one advice to any farmer outside there it would be learn from your mistake make it intentional to make sure that if a mistake happens on your farm that mistake will never happen again on your farm make sure that you learn it get the guys to sit down yeah make sure that you put in place some guidelines to make sure that that thing doesn't happen again get the workers around sit down explain to them that this happened and this happened because of this we did this and this happened now we need to make sure that this doesn't happen again and this is how we're going to prevent it from happening again you need to make sure you come up with action points to intentionally prevent that from happening again. If you do that, you're going to become a very successful farmer. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, smash the notification bell, that way you never miss out on an upload. Catch you very soon with another video. Bye-bye.